Hello and welcome to another Stamp with Amy K YouTube Live and today I'm going to show you how I made a card with the Apple Harvest stamp set which is one of the stamp sets that is in the current mini catalog and um, there's a little bonus with it that will be starting September 1st. Um, you'll be able to actually order some cool dies that coordinate with it. And um, these are new dies uh, only available to demonstrators right now so if you are interested in joining now would be a really excellent time because you can get the dies as part of your starter kit. So yay for that. Um, anyhow, so this is the card we're going to be making today. And um, you know that I do love all things uh, with dies. <laughs> and I can't help myself. Um, I went and got pretty much all the dies from the Perfect Partners uh, promotion, which will be starting on the 1st of September. So this is what we're making. Uh, I had some fun playing with the, the dies. And actually, I made this card before I took off uh, to go see my family last week. So I'm hoping I can remember everything that I did to make it. I think I do. I kind of ran through it in my head. So hopefully I don't mess anything up. And if I do, we'll just have to smile and laugh and carry on. <laughs> so hey, Karen and Carol, thanks so much for joining today. So we're going to start with the stamp set. This is the Apple Harvest stamp set. And it is in the current mini catalog. The um, hey, Carol, Carol times two, I guess. So. Um, so this is in the current uh, July to December 2022 mini catalog from Stampin' Up! Hey, Bree and Bonnie and Rosie. Yay, I'm glad. And thanks so much. We did have a good time. It was nice to see everybody, my entire family, except for one brother-in-law that included all the grandkids, all my brothers and sisters, and I kind of have a lot of them. <laughs> I grew up in a big family of six kids, so there are a lot of grandkids and whatever, and everybody was there. So we all got to um, hang out and see my dad for the weekend, and so that was kind of nice for his 80th birthday. So, all right. <laughs> Back to the card. Hey, Mary and Vicky and Judy. And uh, glad that um, dyes do make everything better, Bonnie. I agree. <laughs> glad that everybody's here today. So this is the stamp set, which again, I loved it in the catalog, but I love it like 10 times more now that there are dyes that coordinate with it. <laughs> so um, so this is the stamp set. Some good sentiments in it. Some pretty images. Perfect for fall and even kind of late summer. Probably even all the way through till Thanksgiving, you can do this one pretty easily. Um, then there are the Apple Blossoms dies, and I guess I should leave the stamp set over here for a second. So there are dies that coordinate with the stamped images. So this one cuts out the larger of the, the kind of grouping of apples. There's one that cuts out the individual apple, one that cuts out this apple. Um, there are a couple that will cut out the flowers and a sentiment die. So yay for that. I do love that. So hey, Stephanie and Denise, thanks so much for joining. So um, so I do love that we've got a sentiment die because sometimes, especially these long skinny ones, don't always fit very well in other dies that we have, but it fits perfectly in here. And then there's this cool scalloped edge, and I'll show you in a second how I use that. I probably didn't use it the way it was designed, but I thought it looked all right, so I went ahead with it anyway. Okay, um, so and then there are some accessory pieces. So these are uh, little flowers. These are designed as flower centers, but you could probably do them as snowflakes or something fun as well. There's a little branch die and then lots of different leaves. So it is a great die set. And again, this will be available for customers to order beginning on September 1st, but it's available right now for demonstrators to order. And it can be added to a starter kit, um, as well as all the other dies that are in this uh, upcoming promotion. So. Um, before we get going on the card, I am going to talk with you for a minute about the promotion. So this is called Perfect Partners, and again, it'll be available beginning on September 1st, running through the 30th, while supplies last. So that's one thing I want to make sure you understand on these dies, and we all know, having just a moment moment of silence for the camper dies, um, you know, the... the the tree lot dies that are gone from celebration. Um, I don't know if these will last through the entire uh, event through the end of September. So make sure you're getting your orders put in early for these. Or like I said, better yet, join now, add them to your starter kit, and then you don't have to worry about it because you'll have them either way. <laughs> so um, there are some dies that coordinate with the Apple Bloss or the Apple Harvest stamp set, the Fresh Cut Flowers stamp set, uh, the this birthday piggy stamp set, the trimming the tree stamp set, waterfall canyon, and the yeti to party stamp set. Uh, so some of these are from the annual catalog. Some of these are from the current mini catalog. Um, again, available from September 1st while supplies last through the 30th. So make sure you get your orders put in. And um, other nice thing about these is if you already bought the stamp set like I did on all of them, um, you can actually purchase the dies individually. Or if you don't have the stamp set yet and you want to get it, you can actually get the bundle pricing and save 10% if you get the dies and the stamp set together during the promotion. 
Um, or you can just get the stamp set, but you know, why would you do that if you can get dies? <laughs> All right, so that's it. Let me know if you have questions. The details for this are gonna be posted on my blog tomorrow. Um, so you'll be able to take a peek at uh, the details and find that flyer on there as well. So again, when I post the de details for this card, I'll link up the card uh, in the description, link up the card post, and then you can find all the details about the promotion there as well. Uh, Stamp It Up has brought out some additional celebration items for us to pick from for free items. So in addition to the items that are still left in the celebration brochure that was sent out originally, um, there are some new items that you can pick from. So the ones with the gold circle are available for free with an order of 50 or greater. Um, the ones with the kind of greenish circle are available with order of 100 or greater. Um, so again, this is through the end of August. So let me know if you have questions on any of that. And remember, again, all of the items in the celebration brochure are while supplies last. Um, these items, I don't think are while supplies last. They're in the annual catalog, so I don't think they're going to go away. But anyhow, so there. <laughs> One other thing that I did want to show you is, I don't know if you've seen it, and again, I'll be posting this on my blog tomorrow so you can take a peek at it a little bit closer and find the flyer and everything on it. Um, Stampin' Up! has a new kit in their kits collection. So if you go to stampinup.com and then click on the little uh, menu item and find the kits in the kits collection, go find this. It is a beautiful Christmas card uh, kit that they have. The kit actually makes 12 cards with coordinating envelopes that are already pre-printed, and they're beautiful, at least in my little opinion, they're beautiful. Um, there's some little gold foiling on them, just the pretty holiday images, love the fruit and the oranges and the cinnamon sticks and all the, all the pretty things for the holidays. It's a great stamp set. And again, I put 12 cards together in less than 30 minutes and they're pretty. So there, the inside, um, there are some sentiments for the inside as well in the, the um, kit. So let me know if you have questions on that. Again, it'll be linked up. Oh, and I forgot the envelope. So here I was gonna show you everything and then I forgot. <laughs> so this is the, the pre-printed envelope that goes with the um, card kit. So again, the details will be posted on my blog tomorrow. So if you have not picked up one of those card kits, go get it, they're really pretty. All right, finally onto the card after all my yakking. So this one actually, believe it or not, I rarely do side fold cards, but I did a standard issue book fold because I thought with a scalloped edge on it, that made more sense than having it be a top fold card. If you like the top fold cards better, you can certainly do it as a top fold card, but you know, it's just my personal thing on this one. I thought that, that the side fold worked a little bit better. Um, so this is a blushing bride card base cut to five and a half by eight and a half and scored at four and a quarter right down the middle. And again, the details will be on my blog tomorrow, so you don't need to worry about, you know, writing down the, the measurements or anything. Um, you will be able to find it linked up in this video description tomorrow as well. Uh, so I've got a little piece of the Gingham Cottage Designer Series paper. Again, this is from the current mini catalog from Stampin' Up! And um, I've got it cut to about one and a quarter by five and a half. And I'm gonna use a little stamp and seal. And hopefully I won't make a mess of things. Oh, I got glue on the front of it already. Um, all right, hey Karen, thanks for hopping in. And we're gonna take this and I'm sticking it on what will be the right hand edge of the uh, card base, but I'm turning it around a little bit so that it's easier for me. It's probably not easier for you to tell what I'm doing with it, but it's easier for me to get it lined up straight if I turn it this way. I don't know why, it just is. <laughs> I guess because it's the way my brain works. All right, so we've got that stuck down. Uh, next thing I did was this is a piece of basic white cardstock that's cut to three and a half by five and a half. And I'm gonna grab the scallop edge die here from the apple blossom dies. And we are just gonna take this and I'm gonna line it up uh, with, you know, line the little bumps of the scallop up right along the edge of the cardstock panel. And I'm gonna run it through the die cutting machine just like this. And I'm gonna hold on to both pieces of it. So don't toss out either one. All right, hold on a second. I'll be off screen doing my die cutting. And hopefully I'll get it straight. All right. So when I cut this, oh, hold on, trying to get it off the, there we go. I've got this scalloped edge, and then there's this pretty little kind of dainty scallop um, that this actually cuts. Now you can take this if I had been, you know, put my adhesive sheets underneath it. I certainly could have taken this and stuck it down on the card. Um, but I actually thought it kind of looked, it made the edge look a little more finished on this. So I'm gonna take it and I'm just gonna tuck it in right along this die cut. So we've got the scalloped edge there, and then I'm gonna add in the additional scalloped edge. 
in order to make it easy on myself. And hopefully it'll work again now that I'm doing it today. <laughs> this worked last week when I did it. I lined this up, uh, made sure top to bottom was lined up and straight along the edge. And then slid it over just a hair, maybe. There we go. And then I'm gonna take my pencil and just sort of make some little dots here along the way that will be covered up by the die cut here in the end. But it gives me an idea where to aim my stamp and seal so that I can actually not have to worry about trying to glue this down with liquid glue and then ending up with it all stuck to my fingers because you all know how big of a mess I am um, with liquid glue. Glue and I do not get along very well. I, I will be using it later on this card, but I did not want to try to have to glue that little skinny edge on because I knew I was going to make a mess because I frequently do. So again, hopefully you can see I've got the little pencil dots here and I'm going to aim the edge of my stamp and seal so that I catch those little dots, hopefully and try not to go too, too far out onto the um, rest of the card base either. So I wanna make sure that I get some along where the little dots are at. And I think I've got most of them. And then I'm gonna come over here along this edge. Whoop. And we're gonna put some stamp and seal over here. Stamp and seal across the top and across the bottom. All right, so then I'm gonna take my larger die cut piece and we're gonna put that down first. And again, I'm gonna take a second because it is stamp and seal and once it's down, it's gonna be down. So I'm gonna try not to smoosh it down until I know it's where I want it to be. All right. And then there should be, if I've done this correctly, and hopefully I did, although I'm not seeing it, of course, not today, I didn't do it correctly. So um, it worked last week. Like I said, it's been a week since I did this and I told you I was probably gonna screw some stuff up and I did. <laughs> so I didn't put the adhesive out quite far enough, either that or I scooted this over too far, one or the other. But I'm just gonna take some little tiny dots of liquid glue and I will try not to make a huge mess, which I probably will anyway, because that's sort of how I roll with liquid glue. And gonna tuck them in here. So this is my backup plan, is that I was gonna take liquid glue and squirt it in here in the side, the little scallopy, scallopy negatives, I don't know, scallopy contours, whatever they are. <laughs> so we're just gonna take that and squirt a little liquid glue in there. So, hey, Lisa, thanks for joining from New Zealand, just in time to watch me mess up on my card because, you know, I do that stuff often. <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna take this little scalloped edge and I'm just gonna tuck it in here and fit it back in basically where it was cut out from and try not to glue my fingers to the card, which is always challenging for me when I use the liquid glue. Like I said, liquid glue and I are not friends, <laughs> but, I try, and I try not to make too much of a mess with it. Oh, oh, get in there. All right, it's gonna make me hold it for a second, because of course it is, because it wouldn't be easy, or wouldn't be an Amy card if I didn't mess something up here at least once. All right, I think, I think, I think I've got it. Tucking it in, sticking it down. Ta-da! Okay, so just, um, if you do it, do it right, and don't mess up like I did. Make sure you put your uh, adhesive out just far enough to catch the edges. So I should have gone out probably another eighth of an inch, and probably would have been perfect, and it would have worked just like my first one did. But if you mess it up like I did, there's always liquid glue to the rescue. Even though now my fingers are sticky, and I'll probably be stuck to everything. <laughs> okay, so ahead of time, I did do... Uh, although I did forget one piece. Hold on, let me grab some more card stuff. I forgot a piece to actually stamp on, good heavens. Okay, so I did do some die cutting ahead of time and a little bit of the coloring as well so you didn't have to watch me color both of the pieces of fruit here. So I've got, I cut with the apple blossoms dies, which are these, um, five of the smaller flowers and I, don't, I think I've got four of the bigger leaves and five of the smaller leaves. I know there were a total of nine and I can't remember whether I kept one more of the bigger or one more of the smaller, but either way, no matter, all good. Um, also cut five of the smaller flower centers from uh, Blushing Bride cardstock. So, uh, and the, oh, and I forgot the little, the little branch here. I cut that as well from Crumb Cake cardstock. So again, I did a bit of the die cutting, all this little tiny stuff ahead of time so you didn't have to sit and watch me cut that over and over again because um, again like I said I know it's not very exciting to sit and watch that now I'm just piling up all the little pieces um, on the flowers let me get them all turned right side around and over here near me 
I did take uh, a sponge dauber and blushing bright ink and just did a little tap on the ink pad and then probably a little more on the ink pad, make sure I've got it somewhat inky. And then just took it to the flower center and just did a quick little twist in each of the flower centers. Um, gonna ink it up again a little bit more, maybe add a little more ink to those. It doesn't need a ton of ink, um, just thought it looked a little more, a little more realistic with the little touch of the blushing bride in the center of it. Plus it coordinated with my uh, designer paper, so bonus on that. <laughs> so, oh, well, thanks so much, Rosie, I appreciate that. So we've got those done and then i'm going to grab my little pair of tweezers here and i'm going to start picking up hopefully if i can get a hold of one my little um, flower centers that i've cut from blushing bride cardstock and i'm going to get my liquid glue out again my trusty and always messy and uh, not so neat liquid glue and i'm just going to put a little dab of that in the center of each of the flowers and then we're just going to stick a flower center on each one and since liquid glue does take a second to dry, I've got a minute here before it'll be completely dry, hopefully. And if it does completely dry before I'm able to stick all my little flower centers on, I can always, oh, oh, stick. Always add a little more liquid glue. See, this is what liquid glue and I are not friends because liquid glue on me always sticks on me, not what I'm supposed to be sticking it to. It never, uh, <laughs> I can make the biggest mess of the simplest project. I was the worst gluer kid in school too. They didn't have, I'm showing my age a lot, um, they did not have glue sticks, at least not in my school when I was a kid. So I never got the joy of not having everything stuck all to my fingers and everywhere else. So, um, so I'm used to the liquid glue mess. I've always been a messy gluer. All right, there we go. Ta-da, all stuck together, stuck to the centers. Uh, liquid glue is not so much fun. <laughs> So, and I'm glad it's not just me that has the glue issues, Vicki. I just, I make such a mess. All right, mm, I think we'll wait and start sticking everything together once I get the uh, flower colored here, flower. The apple colored is what I'm trying to say. So I did one of the apples ahead of time and I'm gonna show you how I did it here. So I've got the uh, apple image from the Apple Harvest stamp set and Tuxedo Black Memento ink and I'm just gonna stamp it on basic white cardstock didn't have glue sticks when you were in school either. Okay, so I'm not the only um, older, we're not calling ourselves old just yet, older person on here. <laughs> so, all right, so stamped it in basic, or in Tuxedo Black Memento ink. I've got uh, Poppy Parade Stampin' Blends, as well as uh, Granny Apple Green Stampin' Blends, and um, the Color Lifter. So I'm gonna start with the apple part, and we're gonna color that with the Light Poppy Parade first. And again, you'll get to see my magical coloring skills. I know you will all be very impressed, uh, or not at all, <laughs> with my ability to color. Um, I do usually put the light down first. And I'm sorry, the air conditioner is like blowing full blast in my office. I'm sure you all can hear it running. I thought it was going to turn off, and then it just turned on like even louder and faster. So hopefully it will shut off soon. Um, so I'm going to just, I usually trace around the outside edges give myself a little bit something to stay in the lines with and then I'm going to switch over and I'm going to use the brush tip end because this is kind of a larger image and I'm going to leave what hopefully looks like a little shine on the apple here a little spot where I'm going to try not to color every single section of it just putting on the color again with the light poppy parade stamp and blends marker and it doesn't matter too much how you color it the first layer because you're gonna be adding more layers of color on. So don't panic too much if you get any, uh, I don't know, kind of squirrely lines in it. Then we've got the dark poppy parade and I'm gonna come in here and Stampin' Up! has kindly added some shadows in here uh, where they should go. So it gives me a little bit of an idea of where I should be putting the darker, um, the poppy parade dark. I'm gonna go trace around the a little leaf here a little bit and go along the edges and probably along the bottom a little bit and then i'm going to take my uh, light and come back and blend a little bit together try not to over blend it but sometimes i do and that's all right too um, so just kind of blending in a little bit along the edges here and again go back along the top and then over here along the edge again where i've got my other dark ink and then i can come back in here and i'll flip around probably and do a little more 
um, add a little more color, another layer of color on with my light to kind of even things out just a little bit. Again, try not to over blend it, um, but if you do, it's okay. Got the color lifter, you can always lift off a little bit of color. Um, and the reds actually kind of react pretty, kind of a lot with the color lifter. So if you need to take a little color off, you'll be good. All right, last thing I did on the apple part was I took the color lifter and I tend to use the um, bullet point on it because I feel like I have a little more control, a um, little better, I don't know, it works a little bit better for me. So then I took the color lifter and kind of came in here and I may need to actually color a little bit more. We'll see how it goes up here and just kind of took the color lifter, blended, and made a little mark in there to make it look like there was a little shine on the apple. And I'm probably gonna come in here and just do a little, fill in a little bit here, cause I think I left it a little too naked up there towards the top. And so that's it. That's kind of how you put the shine on the apple is just um, take the color lifter, color lift a little bit of color, blend it in a little bit and leave it at that. Um, one other thing with the color lifter when you're using it, I generally tend to come through it and color it a little bit first and let it dry and then come back. You can always lift off more color. Um, if you lift too much of it off, you may not be happy with the result. So I tend to do it once, look at it, let it dry. And if I like the way it looks, then I leave it as it is. If I don't and feel like I wanna lift more color off of it, then I do that. Um, so you can kinda, kinda judge it. There's a little bit of an edge here that I'm gonna to try to color. I'll just give it a little bit of lightness there because um, it got a little darker. I don't know for sure why probably just the way that the um, color reacted, but there you go. So that's all I'm gonna do for the color lifting on it. And then I've got my light and dark granny apple green, and I'm gonna start with the light. Again, I tend to start with the light and add in the dark later, cause it's always, you can always add on more color pretty easily. Um, usually you can lift it off with the color lifter too, but it's not always as easy to do that with the color lifter later. So I generally tend to start with lighter and add layers of color rather than starting with something dark and then trying to get it to lighten up later. Um, but everybody has their own coloring techniques on it. So again, color with filling it in with the light. Coming back in again here, they've added a little bit of shading on the stamped image. So I kind of know where to put, where to put some of the dark on here. So I can definitely see that it's there and on this side of the, the leaf and I'll probably follow the veins down a little bit here. And then on here, obviously the, the outside part where that's curled up is probably gonna be a little bit lighter on the inside is gonna be a little bit darker. So that's where I'm gonna add in more of my dark and then come back in with my light again and blend it together just a little bit so that it's not such a harsh line and pull a little of that color down the stem part and then come back over here and do the same thing just going to blend a little bit of the color together here make it a little darker down the one side a little lighter down the other and i think we'll call that good so, ta-da, again, I know y'all are uh, <laughs> so amazed by my fantastic coloring skills. Not at all. Okay, <laughs> so I know I just, I wish that there was a glue, that glue class that you all could teach me because I just, I try and try, and the more I try, the messier I am with it. <laughs> so, all right, so I'm going to grab this die from the Apple Blossoms dies, and I'm going to cut out the little apple with it. So I'll be off screen for just one second as I do that. There's my die cut apple with my die. Let me set that all aside. And we've got our second apple that's already done here. So we've got two of them ready to go on the little tree. Um, next up, I'm gonna start gluing things down. So I've got my little branch that I have cut from Crumb Cake cardstock. And again, I just cut it with one of the little accessory dies from the Apple Blossoms dies. And here's another test of my, uh, my gluing abilities. <laughs> So this would have been one that um, if I'd thought about it and been smart, I would have put adhesive sheets on the back of it. But I did not think of it until after everything was all done and cut. And so you get to watch me um, try not to stick this to my fingers. Um, so got a little liquid glue on it. I'm going to generally aim it up this corner and uh, point it down so that my apples hopefully will be mostly on the, the um, die cut scallop piece that I want here. So I'm going to kind of scoot it on here like this. Get my tweezers out of the way, swish it down with my fingers, and again, hope that I didn't get glue all over everything. All right, 
Oh, I'm glad you like the color lifter thing. It, it's a lifesaver. If you don't have the color lifter and you have the blends, get it because you're going to love them. <laughs> so next up, uh, I am going to add on my little apples to make sure that those get placed where I want them to be. And then I can add the other pieces around it. And I guess I can use stamp and seal here on the back of this apple because it's a pretty good sized one. And I want that one kind of stuck down flat to the card front. And I've tried to make it look like it was coming off whoop, coming off the tree. I don't know how successful I was with that, but that was my idea with it when I started sticking these down. And then I'm gonna use Stampin' Dimensionals to put the other one down here. And just a little bit more there. Um, again, don't forget Stampin' Up! has got a joining promotion going on. You get a free planner um, if you purchase the starter kit before the end of celebration, which ends on August 31st. Um, and like I said, you can also pre-order these dies in your starter kit or um, do your starter kit with whatever you wanted and then uh, pre-order the dies somewhere along the line as a demonstrator. So yay for that. All right, I'm gonna pull out some glue dots here and gonna start sticking down some of the leaves and the flowers. Um, I think I will start with the flowers. So I'm gonna aim for trying to get it in the center with the glue dot. And if I end up like I did here where it's a little off center, you can always just roll up your glue dot, make sure it's hidden behind um, your die cut flower. Take that and kind of tuck it up here. I think we'll go about right there with that one. And then we'll take another one and same thing, just gonna add a little glue dot behind it. Try and make sure I've got it so that it's hidden behind my die cut. And we'll take that and sort of stick it over here like it's coming off that branch. So, gonna do another, whoop, there, see my bad gluing skills. It came apart. That's all right, we'll glue it back down in a second. So got my extra little flower. We're gonna tuck that one down here. Let me grab my liquid glue and try to get this little darn thing to stick to the flower and not to me. All right, little liquid glue in the center. Um, it is a great set, and I like I said, I liked the set when I saw it in the catalog, and then when it had the dyes, I'm like, yep, sold. It's definitely the best. <laughs> so, all right, let me get the last two little, actually, I'm going to wait on the last two flowers till I get my sentiment done. So I'm going to tuck some leaves around the die-cut flowers. Got, um, again, just glue dots that I'm going to be using to put the little leaves down here. We're going to tuck them underneath the flowers, because I think that's how they typically grow but I don't know. All right, tuck this one down under here. I'm definitely not a flower expert. All right, there we go. And take two of the smaller ones and tuck them around the second flower here. And this is why I do like glue dots as opposed to the liquid glue, because I can kind of tuck them in and around and stick them where I want them to be um, and not have them be stuck down forever and ever. If I need to pull one up, I can certainly do that with a glue dot. Liquid glue gets a little messier <laughs> and uh, doesn't always come up as easily. And grab one of the larger ones and we'll put it underneath the third flower here and one of the smaller ones. So again, just tucking it under here, making sure I'm staying on the card front. Get my other little flower or other little leaf, stick it down here or up here or whatever you want to say. There you go. Tucking it around the flower. Oop, there we go. All right, next up we have the sentiment, and I have got just this piece of basic white cardstock. We are going to um, stamp the sentiment in Poppy Parade ink. And again, the sentiment is from the Apple Harvest stamp set. So let's see if we can get a good image on that. Yep, looks pretty good. And we'll set that down over here. And... Uh, I don't know, hopefully the video isn't too blurry for everyone. I don't know, sometimes if you go out and come back in, it's a little bit better. Um, it certainly could be something going on with YouTube or the internet too, so. Um, so there is the die from the Apple Blossoms dies that fits perfectly around the sentiment, which I love. Um, so there we go, gonna run that through the die cutting machine, so I'll be off screen for just a second. you know why not now I'll try not to roll over with my chair <laughs> all right so we've got our little die cut sentiment um, if you prefer mini stampin dimensionals you can definitely use those on the back of this 
sentiment banner. Um, I have my dimensionals chopped in half, so mine fit nicely on the back of the sentiment. So however you choose to use your dimensionals, you can certainly use either one and they will both work great. Uh, then I'm gonna take this and tuck it right down here at the bottom and hopefully get it centered and straight. And then I'm gonna take the last couple of little flowers and we're just gonna tuck them in around my sentiment and the card's gonna be all done. Um, well, almost all done. I guess we have to do the inside yet, so. All right, take this and again, just roll my glue dots, make sure they're not peeking out from the front. And I think we'll take that, sort of tuck it under the sentiment a little bit. Take the second little flower, stick it in here. Right along the edge, I think we'll go maybe a little bit further out. All right, grab a couple of the leaves and tuck those around the flowers. And hopefully, there we go. Yeah, that one's kind of hiding more of the flower than I want, so I think I will tuck the larger leaf down here this time. Uh, there we go, smaller leaf. So. Ah, the dies are awesome. You are going to love them. Yes. <laughs> like I said, I thought the stamp set was really pretty. And then when you put the dies with it, yep, sold. 100%. <laughs> no questions asked. Just, you know, take my money. <laughs> so, all right. And I will tuck the last of the leaf in right underneath here. And I think I got everything on the card front. And I think I've got all the flowers where I want them to be. The last thing that I did add is um, one of the iridescent pearl basic jewels to the center of each of the flowers to give it sort of a little, I don't know, flower center, I guess. Um, a little white flower center, maybe. Maybe I should grab my tweezers and try to do this because I'll end up with it, st again, stuck to me, not the, to the card front where I want it to be. Should have grabbed my little take your pick tool, but of course... That is never handy when I need it. <laughs> it's always across the room. And there we go. And the tweezers, I can usually pick, pick them enough um, that I can get them onto the card and have them look relatively decent. Oh, there we go. And we'll get one more. And that's gonna be it for the card front, maybe. If I can get this last one to cooperate and flip over. There we go, yay, the crowd goes crazy. <laughs> All right, so, hey, Linda, thanks for hopping in. So that's it for the card front. Again, super, super simple, just a little stamping, a little coloring, a little die cutting, and it's done. And um, like I said, I think it's a, good, a great fall card. Um, lots of pretty images, and I love these dies so, so much. All right, last thing inside of the card, I've got a piece of basic white cardstock. This is cut to about four by five and a quarter. And then this is just a little piece of the um, uh, gingham, Cottage designer series paper that I trimmed away when I was cutting the piece for the card front. And we're just going to take a little stamp and seal and stick it on here. This is about, I don't know, five eighths of an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch, probably closer to five eighths of an inch wide. I'm going to grab my snips and trim it off. And we'll stick it to the inside of the card and we will be all done for today. So. Thanks so much for joining today. I appreciate you being here. Um, hopefully you have a wonderful weekend. I will plan to be back on my Facebook page. It's probably gonna be the four o'clock timeframe um, next week, Tuesday, because we've got some changes to the schedule until school starts. So, uh, but I'll, I'll post a note on my Facebook page, but plan to be live on my business Facebook page around four o'clock Eastern time on Tuesday. And then back here around two o'clock Eastern time on my YouTube page. So I'll plan to see you all next week. Uh, for a couple of videos. Uh, card I made ahead, card we made today. It's a beautiful die set. If you're not a demonstrator, you should join so you can get the die set. And if you want to join, holler at me. I'd be happy to chat with you more about it. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much for joining today. I appreciate you all being here. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend and um, we will chat with you all soon.